higher order functions of behavior, thought, language, consciousness. And um, we set about at the Allen Institute and sort of very systematically marching from left to right. So we started out with our Atlas projects, as we we're showing where genes are turned on in the brain. And then we moved uh, forward into um, uh, what I call establishing a beachhead on this concept of cell types. So genes helped us establish um, this concept of cell types. And then we've been building on that to start to look at connections. You'll hear a lot about our connectivity atlas. Uh, and then it, part of our 10-year plan started to embark on an understanding of, of neural computation, um, circuits, um, ultimately some elements of behavior. Um, as, as we always joke with uh, Christoph Cook, our chief scientific officer, consciousness is not going to be tackled in, in this particular decade and 10-year plan. So on the next slide. Um, this just highlights um, last year at this time we were celebrating our 10-year anniversary. Um, and not to belabor the point because these things are very small, um, we've been growing. We reached 100 employees in 2008. Um, we reached 200 employees in uh, 2012 and have continued to grow and contribute a broad variety of different resources to the scientific community in an open sharing way. On the next slide. Just some uh, high-level uh, notes here. We have um, uh, been generously uh, um, benefited from Paul Allen's donations. He's uh, committed um, over $500 million uh, to date to the efforts of the Institute. Um, we're now up to about 270 employees. Um, 90 of those employees have PhDs from 39 different fields. I, I, I had a conversation with our communications person around I couldn't even name 39 different fields in science, but apparently we have PhDs in, in a wide variety of, of different disciplines. And again, these all come together and work towards these common goals and projects and programs. Um, our web-based resources um, have very broad reach. Um, we get around 50,000 unique visits a month. Um, we know from, we don't require people to even register to use this data. We're completely open and available, um, but we know that um, people from really around the world, from everything from academic centers, of, of all the academic centers that you could name, um, in addition to biotech and pharma, all are regular users of our data. So on the next slide, I'd like to move into uh, a discussion briefly to set the stage for the scientific program um, of our next uh, um, eight years now. So we're two years into our broader 10-year plan and vision. And um, we've been making the analogy to a, a cell phone to um, try to explain uh, some elements of what we're trying to do. And so the, the idea here is if, if, if somebody, so the Apple iPhone 6 just came out. So I imagine if I work for Samsung and we have a Samsung phone deconstructed here, uh, the first thing I'm going to do um, uh, is get that phone and I'm going to be told to take it apart and figure out what it is. And they do this on a regular basis when new things come out. So they're going to take it apart. They're going to do electron microscopy on the chip architecture. Um, they're going to start doing all the kinds of uh, rigorous tests of the software and other things to try to understand exactly how this thing ticks and works. And we have the same challenge in understanding the brain. Um, we have a number of tools for interrogating this, looking at the individual components. And that's one element of it. Um, but we're also very interested in looking at the computation. What is the operating system that they're using? What are the things that are uniquely sort of running out of that hardware uh, to make this thing happen? And then finally, what are the apps that are going to run on top of this, the sort of the cognition uh, elements that are running on top of that? And so we have these programs which um, are, are tackling various elements of these three axes. Uh, some of them are tackling multiple elements. And, and um, they're all coming together to, to solve some really tough uh, questions that are outstanding for the field. So if we go to the next slide and click a couple times, one, two, three, one more. Thank you. Um, there are a series of questions underlying each of these. Um, and I'm not going to go through these here, um, but understand that this is uh, something that the scientific team at the Allen Institute, and the, I mean that in a broad sense, the broad scientific team of the Allen Institute, helped um, define these questions um, that we're interested in going at. 
have uh, neural coding efforts, and this is sort of in the awake behaving mouse. Um, this is looking at um, the brain in action. Um, we have uh, cell types programs, and this uh, I would describe as this is the component um, writ large. So this is um, a logical progression of our previous Atlas work that helped really define all of those components and elements um, as they relate to cell types. Um, and then finally, we have programs um, in what we're calling in vitro uh, human. Um, and this is the idea that um, ultimately our, our, our larger mission is to understand how the human brain works. And um, we're going to be pushing very hard to be able to test um, and build test beds um, in the dish to be able to look at uh, human circuitry and test hypotheses about information coding and processing um, in a dish because we don't think we're going to be able to do it in humans in vivo anytime soon, um, the brain initiative non notwithstanding. So um, next slide just describes how we've organized and, and, and hope to orchestrate all of these different questions, all of these different programs based on milestones. I'm not going to go into this in detail, but understand that um, all of the posters, all of the talks that you hear from Institute folks um, are going to be relating to these various uh, milestones that we're driving to. And they have specific deliverables and, and um, decision gates and other things that help us uh, move forward on our, on our ambitious goals. So the next slide, um, just a little good news for next year. Um, so if you haven't driven by uh, the new building, um, it's at um, basically Mercer, Westlake, Ninth and Broad, uh, which is right in the heart of South Lake Union. Um, we are now well poked above the ground. I think they're already under the third floor. I've been told the 12th man flag is flying high. Um, and um, it's, really, um, it's, it's really starting to look like a building. Um, <coughs> and in, in very short order, they'll have the full six floors, and you'll see how huge it really is. It's, it's, it's 260,000 square feet, and um, very excitedly, we will be moving into that around this time next year. So the next slide, um, just to highlight, we talked about this a little bit at last year's symposium. Um, I clicked three times. One more. Okay, that's good. Um, the, the real excitement now is <coughs> that we were the trendsetters. Uh, we launched our, um, our ambitious 10-year plan in 2012. Um, 2013, the U European Union announced theirs. There was also the Brain Initiative, which um, launched its Brain 2025 plan um, through the NIH um, earlier this year. Um, so the, the numbers are quite large across the, uh, the various different groups, um, and it's a really exciting time. I just got back from uh, Japan, where I heard about a big initiative there, which is on the order of 30 to $35 million a year to fund work on the Marmoset monkey. Uh, so they're looking at connectivity and other things. Um, Hong Kui Zong, one of the institute scientists here, um, has uh, just returned from uh, China where they're actively planning a large-scale brain initiative there on the macaque monkey. Um, so there's a lot of interesting uh, big-scale efforts that are now launching across the globe. And our role in it is to be a partner and collaborate with everybody. There are huge problems. We like to think of ourselves as being the most open and free and sharing of all of these groups. Uh, and, and hope to continue to be a leader in this space um, globally. So with that, let me go to the next slide and click, click, click through there. Okay. Oh, back. Thank you. Um, so we're doing something, again, a little different um, this time for our, our annual symposium. And we decided, because we have 90 PhDs on staff uh, and a lot of great science going on at the Allen Institute, that we wanted to mix it up this year. And rather than have a lot of outside speakers come, um, we're going to feature the scientists at the Institute. So it's a very different program than in past. We're going to have mix it up quite a bit. We've got um, interesting team talks and other things. Um, and one of the things that I, I, I want to mention here is that, that um, there's a showcase organizing committee that, that um, is comprised of um, institute scientists that are not at the senior management levels very purposefully. We wanted to do that. And we wanted to do that in concert with what we're calling this Next Generation Leaders Council. So you'll see here highlighted are a number of the rising stars of, of, the, of the neuroscience community um, that we wanted to bring in, not only to feature and speak at this symposium, but to also
also be part of our advisory group. Um, they're going to be um, sitting through the and reviewing the science that we're delivering over the next couple of days and giving us hopefully some very useful feedback on our programs and that sort of thing. Um, we're gonna we're starting this program this year with six. We'll sort of bring in six more next year, six the following year, and they have a three-year term so that we'll get a critical mass of, of 18 of these uh, next generation leaders um, that are going to be helping us every year uh, as we move forward and, and highlight the showcase and next generation leaders. Um, one of the things that I wanted to um, acknowledge right now is that showcase organizing committee. So I don't know if you guys can all, can everybody who's on the organizing committee stand just briefly? So I want to highlight that this particular group um, spent a lot of time and bandwidth in pulling this, this thing together. I truly, we, we set the mandate together and then um, these guys went to town and really have done um, all of the work, the planning, the um, even setting up the whole next generation leaders group. They screened all the candidates, they made the selections. Um, and I'm incredibly proud of our own leaders uh, in, in the organization to be able to, to pull something like that off. It was a, this is not an easy thing to do. Um, and so I think let's please give them a round of applause for um, really spending a lot of their time doing this. So with that, I will, I think if we go to the last slide, just our group photo, um, which is um, probably, hopefully many of you in the audience, uh, in addition to some outside visitors, um, let me turn it over to Julie, who is the chair of the Showcase Organizing Committee. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, so it's, it's been a great pleasure, to, it is a great pleasure to welcome you all here today and to see this event finally take shape after the last year of working on planning it together. So before I begin, I wanted to actually call out the names of the people on the organizing committee specifically to thank them for all of their hard work in this. It's been, as Alan said, it's been a pretty um, big effort on all of our part to pull this together. So the people that are on the committee um, that helped put this together are Tom Keenan, Tim Blanche, Saskia DeVries, David Fang, Carol Thompson, Anton Orkopoff, Angie Bongartz, Jim Berg, Jack Best, Terry Bernard, Jennifer Pulaski and Joyce Knorr. So thank you all for, for all of your hard work in this. Um, we have a pretty packed agenda ahead of you today. Um, you'll hear presentations from four of the six next generation leaders that Alan highlighted on the previous couple slides. Um, interspersed with those will be two team talks from the Institute. And then we'll end the afternoon with um, these 30 second lightning talks that are um, uh, kind of previews of the poster session. And then there will be the, at the very end of the day, the poster session for several hours where there's about 30 Institute posters that everybody can please go and, and enjoy and learn a lot more about the different types of science that are going on here that you won't get just from the team talks. Um, so that's, that's really it for the day. Um, we'll continue this tomorrow and I'll give a couple more introductory remarks tomorrow. We'll hear from the rest of the, the other two next generation leaders interspersed with additional team talks from the Institute. Um, so without any yeah, further delay, I will introduce Clay Reed, who is our senior, one of our investigators here, the senior investigator for neural coding at the Institute.